What's going on everybody? My name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on the numerical Python package NumPy. So, in the previous tutorial, we saw some of the function, some of the functions that are useful for creating special mathematical arrays in uh, NumPy using NumPy. And now, in this tutorial, we will see some of the functions that are useful uh, for plotting, some, plotting mathematical functions, so to speak. All right. So let's get started. Essentially, let's say you have a graph sheet and uh, you have a graph sheet and you want to plot, let's say, the sine function. What you'll do is that you will just um, take, uh, define some x values, x values, uh, some between some starting point and ending point, and then for each and every x value, you calculate the equivalent y, equivalent to y value using equivalent y value using a formula and then you plot the y value corresponding to the x value in a graph sheet and then you go about with it right now how do we go about that uh, how do you go about that with panampai is pretty simple uh, to go uh, for that we first we need what do you call as uh, grid point values and generating grid point values is pretty simple there are two functions available in numpy to do that one is the linspace command what it does is you have just to specify the starting point and the ending point of your interval that you want to plot the function with and you specify the number of points in between so here i want 201 points between minus 10 and 10 okay and this will give me a value an array x whose values who which has 201 points between minus 10 and 10 and this uh, 201 points will include the starting point and ending point so essentially there will be 199 points between uh, minus 10 and 10. If you include the two extremes, it's uh, if you include the two extremes, then it's 201. All right, that's one command. The other command is called as mp dot a range, wherein wherein you specify the starting point, you specify the ending point with a little bit of offset so that you include the ending point as well and then you specify the, uh, the spacing between them. Unlike the linspace command where you specify the number of points, you specify the spacing and then, and look at it, the, this command will return you, a, uh, return you a, uh, an array with points that are linearly spaced between the starting value and the ending value. So in A range, it's like a complement of linspace in space, you give the number of points and delta x or the spacing is calculated automatically. In A range, it's the spacing is calculated automatically, but the number of points is is left by the is calculated by the function or automatically. All right. So these two are complementary functions, and you can use them whenever you need, depending upon your case. Now we have a one of our grids ready. Let's actually do something a little fancy with it. Let's actually plot the sine curve. So let's say we have our x, and let's say our value sign, this variable sign calculates, uh, has the sign value for each and every point. You can run a loop and then say, but that's not, that's pretty dumb and old. There is actually a vectorize, vectorize option available, and that is using the sign function in Py, uh, NumPy. The, all the uh, arrays in NumPy, all the NumPy arrays are vectorizable in nature, so the, you can pass the entire uh, array into a function, and the function will, it will return a vector as it is. So if I calculate, if I type np dot sine of x, it'll calculate the sine value for each and every uh, x value, and then it'll save it in sine for me. Now let's import uh, matplotlib dot pyplot with an alternate name plt. And then let's plot it. So let's say x comma y, not x sine, x comma sine, and actually look it up, look it for ourselves. Now the plot is ready. Now we need to show this. And there you go. Now you have a sine function between uh, minus 10 and 10 plotted over here on a graph sheet. Sweet. Now not only sine, you can also do. A, we can also make some quadratic polynomials, quadratic polynomials, or any polynomial of our choice. Let's say we have. Uh, we create a quadratic polynomial quad one, which is uh, x square plus 2.0 times x plus five. Let's say. All right. Um, okay, this okay. This should be good. This should be good enough. Now, let's say we want to plot this. Just type uh, plot x comma quad one, and to show it, just type plt dot show. And there you go. Now we have a quadratic polynomial, uh, quadratic polynomial plotted in the graph sheet, just like what we intended to do. Cool. 
now if you notice here since the vector methods since the numpy arrays are vectorizable scalar operations actually work on them just like that so this is just like a vector multiplication so there's nothing but like a scalar multiplication of a vector with all its coordinates and similarly elemental multi elemental operations work for uh, the uh, any operation like this they just elemental in nature so if you want to multiply as if you if you operate a vector with a scalar with a corresponding operator the individual elements get operated so if you multiply 2.0 with a 2.0 times x each and every entry of x gets multiplied by 2 but not not necessarily one entry but each and every value if we add something to an x uh, to a numpy array that value is added to each and every element of the numpy array similarly if i take this power of an uh, power of a numpy array each and every element gets in, in, in gets powered up by that uh, x gets powered up by the value i put all right so this is pretty helpful otherwise you have to write a loop and do all of this for each and every element other uh, since the, uh, other and which would have been a little bit time consuming and tedious here because of vectors of op vectorization operation we can directly write our formula and with the nick of time it's ready for us all right so with that being said let's actually do a little bit fancy one to for fancy one for now so let's actually draw this uh, by uh, the probability distribution function all right uh, which will actually which will actually calculate uh, which will actually plot all plot all these values so the probability distribution function for uh, density function for the normal distribution is given as this 1 by root of 2 pi sigma square times exponent of x minus mu mu square divided by 2 sigma square all right so this looks a pretty messy that's that's how it uh, it is but let's actually do this in numpy and then plot it using matplotlib all right so let's actually go about, let's actually define a function so that we that we can do this easily def, def uh, non function by the way, there is actually a function that is available in numpy to do all this stuff but um, well, anyway the, le, this will be like a warm up practice for that so let's give an x to it and then we put uh, mu to it mean the mean to it and then we put the variance to variance to it okay and uh, let's cag uh, let's calculate the it's calculated so return um, uh, 1.0 times uh, this has to be square root so this has, this has to be a square root so 2 2.0 uh, how am i typing okay this should be inside 2.0 times np dot pi times sigma square so sigma square is nothing but the variance with that being with that with that the first part is ready and now we need the numpy dot we need the exponential function so we can call in the um, exponential function inside numpy okay we put a minus sign over here and this part this at the bottom is 2.2 .2 times uh, variance whereas over here it is actually uh, x minus x minus mean and we have to raise this by a power 2 all right and press enter and the normal function is ready normal function is ready and now what we can do is uh, send so this let's read let's uh, recreate uh, recreate this graph over here so this graph has four normal distribution functions whose uh, va whose x while x is being between minus 5 and 5 mean are 0 point the variance is 0 0.2 and there are four values let's actually do about with that do with that so x has to be linearly spaced between uh, point 0.5 uh, minus 5 and 5 so np dot um, i'm going to use a range command over here so minus 5 till 5.01 okay let me keep the spacing to be um, uh, 0 0.1 let's say that should I mean um, that should be good enough okay that should be good in, um, okay I think I'll put 0 0.05 okay that should be good enough and now let's calculate the first function so PDF 1 is equal to equals norm function norm of function X and then the mean actually is 0 and the standard deviation I mean the, the variance is 0 0.2 similarly PDF 2 is the same but the deviation is i mean the variance is 
PDF3. PDF3 is the same but the deviation is 5. And PDF4, PDF4 is a, has a mean minus 2, minus 2.0. And the standard deviation is uh, 0 0.5, I mean, variance is 0 0.5. All right, now let's actually plot them together. So PLT dot, PLT dot, plot, um, X comma, PDF, uh, PDF1 comma, color, let's give it a color. So the color, first one, let it be in blue. And then a label, Label equals um, mean equals uh, var equals and then let's give it let's put the values inside so far with using format let's say uh, one uh, zero comma uh, zero point two there okay we got the first plot ready let's plot in the second one and this one is in red color the mean is per mean is one zero as it is whereas the plot uh, whereas the format is I mean the standard I mean the variance is one second one is ready and the third one is in yellow color just like the Wikipedia plot Wikipedia one and let this be f uh, five as as mentioned Okay, and then ho and then the final one, PDF four, and whose value well, this would be in green color, and the mean is uh, minus two point minus two point zero, whereas the standard deviation is zero point five. Okay, and let's actually put a legend so that we see what's actually happening. And legend is ready. Now we type PLD dot show. Hopefully, perfect. I've been trying this thing for three to four. I mean, I'm trying this video for three to four times and all the time I got an error. Hopefully this time I got it right. Perfect. And now we have all the four uh, standard distribution functions plotted neatly for us. Cool. And that's how we do, and that's how we do it. Now, you, uh, now with this example you, you saw, you saw how to create a simple function, simple functions after creating a linear grid, some gridded, spot, gridded points, how do, how you can use um, scalar operations, vector operations with num, uh, the matrices, with the numpy arrays and how you can use the inbuilt function, and inbuilt constants, and then how you can directly use them in the plotting, plotting to uh, visualize your functions and all. All right. So that being said, this uh, this concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching. In the next tutorial we'll go with uh, we'll go with mesh grid options and other few more slightly um, fancier options that are available in NumPy. So that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.